of devotion to Thee. O Lord, take my hands and let them work incessantly for Thee. O Lord, take my soul and let it be merged in one with Thee. O Lord, take my mind and thoughts and let them be in tune with Thee. O Lord, take my everything and let me be an instrument to work.
तो तोफी के सफर भी दे गुफ्त गु तूल सिखाई है गुफ्त गु तूल सिखाई है कि मैं गूंगा गुफ्तगु तूने सिखाई है कि मैं गूंगा अब मैं बोलूंगा अब मैं बोलूंगा तो बातों में असर भी देना मेरे उलझे हुए ख्वाबों को तराजू दे दे मेरे उलझे हुए ख्वाबों को मेरे उलझे हुए ख्वाबों को तराजू दे दे मेरे साई बाबा हे स्वामी मेरे साई मुझे जज्बात पे काबू दे दे मैं समंदर भी मैं समंदर भी किसी गैर के हाथों से न मैं समंदर भी किसी गैर के हाथों से न और एक कतरा भी समंदर है अगर तू दे दे एक कतरा भी समंदर है अगर तू दे दे रखो मोरे लाज रखो मोरे साई बाबा रखो मोरे लाज रखो मोरे साई बाबा रखो मोरे लाज रखो मोरे साई बाबा राखो मोरे लाज राखो मोरे साई बाबा राखो मोरे लाज मोरे मोरे साई बाबा राखो मोरे लाज राखो मोरे साई बाबा तुम ही रहे करी मोरे बाबा तुम ही रहे करी मोर बाबा नजर करो करो प्रेम करो मो पे राखो मोरे लाज राखो मोर साई बाबा तुम ही रहे करी मोर बाबा तुम ही रहे करी नजर करो करो प्रेम करो मो पे राखो मोरे लाज राखो मोरे साई बाखो मोरे लाज राखो मोरे साई बाबा तेरी सनो के खुदा बंदे लायजाल है तू यही मिसाल है तेरी बेमिसाल है तू तेरा कमाल ही दुनिया के हर कमाल में है ये शान तेरी के हर शान में कमाल है तू राखो राखो मोरे लाज राखो मोरे साई बाबा राखो मोरे लाज Oh, oh, oh.
Om Sairam. Swami was the first person in the modern age to say humans and God are one. Swami declared that service to human beings was service to God and that this would lead us to merging with God, thus breaking the cycle of birth and death. Swami is the only avatar in recent times who has demonstrated his omniscience, his omnipresence and his omnipotence in various countries, including the UK. Through these visiting cards, he has drawn people into his fold and transformed them. Swami introduced Grana Siva to students at his institutions, whereby food and clothing are distributed to rural poor of Andhra Pradesh each year. The intent of the programme is to sensitise the students to the needs of the poor, such that, when the students leave Swami's educational institutions, they devote their energies towards upliftment of the needy. Swami established probably the first and only multi-faith spiritual organisation in the world. It has over 6 million followers from all faiths, and none, and is present in over 120 countries. Swami established world-class educational institutions in India, giving free education from kindergarten to PhD level, with faculty members being the creme of academics. Swami delivered the world's largest social benefit project, funded by a private charitable organisation. When he commissioned a water supply and distribution system for more than a million people in 700 villages in Andhra Pradesh in 1995. This was no ordinary system. The dangerous chemical, fluoride, had to be reduced in concentration to make the water safe. Swami facilitated ordinary people learning powerful Vedams, which for generations only priests knew. Swami thus revived Vedic culture, which promotes dharma, righteous living, in society. Dharma leads to harmony. Swami established two super speciality hospitals in the world with state of the art medical systems, giving totally free medical help to everyone. Indeed, there is no cash counter in either of the hospitals. Sai Ram, Sai Sham, Mere Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Shab, Mere Sai Ram Mere Sai, Mere Baba Mere Pran Nath Ram Sai Ram, Sai Shab, Mere Sai Shanti do Bhagavan Mere jeevan me Saat raho Sai naat mere Mere sai Mere baba Mere pran na Sairam, brothers and sisters, respected elders, we are now going to have our 
Brother Pugasa and Sister Tavi to share their experiences on how they came to Swami. And I'm most grateful for them doing this. It's starting off, I think, something that we can all do and all take part in. So over to you, Tavi and Pragasan. Hello, Radhika. Hello. Hello. Hello, Neil. Thank you for having us and giving us this opportunity to share a little bit of our journey to Swami with you all. Do you want to? Do you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so I mean, most of you probably know Tavi and I, uh, and we've always been part of the organization. You've always seen us around. Uh, events, center. the center, um, doing Swami's work. Um, you probably don't know some of the stories that we've had uh, individually. So I'll probably go first. I first came to know Swami probably when I was very young. I must, I must have been about five or six, I think. Uh, and uh, my parents used to go for service. Um, so they used to go for budgets, but it was very infrequent. Budgets used to be done on a Thursday. And one of the things I do remember, I remember miracles because um, there was this phenomenon in South Africa going on at the moment where they used to place these tea, this tea at the prayer places and there used to be this, this bread. the bread form on top of the tea. Uh, and that was my first memory of um, Swami's picture and Swami. And then my brother was born, I was probably five, five, six years old, and we stopped going to, to Bhajan's. Uh, mm. And then I remember again, by the time I was about 12 or 13, my dad had a dream one day and one of his very close friends' um, uh, family were give, was giving him a picture of Swami. And it, it was rolled up in, a, in this cardboard uh, holder. Uh, and he, the next morning he got up, I mean, he told us all about the dream that, that morning. He then got up, uh, I mean, that morning, he uh, phoned his friend's um, family. And uh, the, the family had said that they had placed aside a picture of um, Swami's picture in this cardboard holder, exactly the same cardboard holder that he described. Mm. Uh, and he need to go and pick it up. So we all went as a family to pick up this picture and that became our picture, our prayer picture at home. Uh, and that was really the journey to uh, getting to know Swami. I, we then went to service on a regular basis on a Thursday, service was on a Thursday then. Uh, and then I got involved uh, mostly doing music uh, at the, at the center and uh, with the youth uh, doing several activities. Uh, and then the other thing I do remember is I did read a copy of a book called Man of Miracles. Mm. Uh, and I was very skeptical of uh, who Swami was uh, at that time because I was very logical, very science orientated. Uh, so I went through my own experiences of questioning and challenging Swami because I thought he was a magician. I genuinely thought Swami was a magician. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll probably tell you a little bit more a little later, but I, that was my journey to Swami at that time. I was 12, uh, and then I did lots of challenging Swami right up until I was 17, 18 years old. To tell that, you know, Swami's visiting card was then, or it came a bit later? I, I would probably say for me, I, I might have had three distinct um, experiences or spiritual awakenings, right? That was one. I don't... I don't immediately think that was mine. I think it was just as a family that was our spiritual mm. awakening. And, and if you look at our family at the moment, mom and dad are late. My brother is not uh, uh, any longer um, heavily involved with the Sai organization. He doesn't know Swami, but not, not involved with the Sai organization. So, so I, I, I do think there was a, a, a spiritual awakening for me. Um, I then, I, I, I met Tavi and then realized Swami was a very, very strong part of her life. And, uh, uh, through the whole process of getting involved in several activities in the youth. Uh, that was one. Um, and then we had two or three experiences where we, I mean, I came very close to death. Uh, and, and, and that was a, an experience that, you know, Swami that appeared in front of me. Uh, and uh, I was very close to death at that point. No idea why uh, I'd walked into this armed robbery and uh, Swami was there and saved, um, saved me. Uh, and then uh, later on in life, uh, when we had our second child, Vadasya, uh, we had an incident where she was born, Tavi was, was bleeding in, in the hospital room, and I was praying to Swami desperately, and uh, uh, the doctors, we had gone from one doctor to ten doctors in the room, 
and um, and Tabi was saying goodbye at that point. And I remember praying to Swami. And all of a sudden, the doctor turned to me and went, what are, what are you doing? And I said, I'm praying. And the doctor said, carry on praying. Uh, and, for, and, and, and hence, um, Anil, if you, if you kind of get to know both Tavi and I, uh, we don't question Swami because we've experienced a lot of omnipresence. So those are distinct experiences of spiritual awakening, I'd say, for me um, mm -hmm. and my journey. Wow. Have you met Swami in person or have you gone to Prashanti? Uh, uh, I haven't, I've never been to India. Uh, and that's actually something that um, people always ask me because I've always been active in, in this organization. And I think perhaps that Swami's gift to me because I had wonderful uh, mentors, Balbikas gurus, coaches all along the way, giving me the courage and the inspiration and the support to actually delve deeper and know that I was divine and I was able to be an instrument of Swami's. And because of that, I didn't, I didn't feel that I quite needed to go to India. There were a few times when I did ask and it didn't happen. And I was actually quite annoyed <laughs> that it didn't happen. So I, so I did, I did uh, argue with Swami. And then I was speaking to one of the old aunties at the center that I used to go to. And she told me the, the little analogy of, of, you being like a battery and only if you need recharging then Swami would call you to him and she said no don't worry because clearly you don't need recharging and that gave me a lot of confidence and faith in the fact that Swami was with me all the time replenishing my energy and my positivity uh, feeding my divinity so I didn't need to make that journey to India. So um, I mean I'd say look there, 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 there are two roads anyone has in life Right. You've got the easy road and you've got the more difficult. The spiritual path is a cobbly road, really hard stones on the spiritual yeah. path. Whereas the easy road is, a, you know, the M1 or the motorway that's paved with uh, beautiful lights. And it's probably even automated these days, right? Uh, but the, the road less traveled by Robert Frost. Uh, the, 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 the spiritual path is a, when you choose a spiritual path, what happens is God gives you the opportunity of revealing mm. himself through you right mm -hmm. and, and hence connecting back to god mm -hmm. uh, i would say that our spiritual journey have we had the easiest part where everything has been kind of gifted Rosie, to you? No. absolutely no. not right we've had no. lots of challenges that challenges uh, those challenges have absolutely helped both of us get to the true a uh, truer nature of who but we are i don't think we're there it yet. wasn't easy though because in the beginning when the challenges came it was firstly, it was difficult facing them because we were in the mentality of blame. And when you externalize things, it's easy to blame. So you, you yeah. never, you know, you never in, you never in fault, a, right? yeah, at fault. Yeah. And, uh, and also we were very impatient because we wanted quick fix solutions and, and we'd pray to Swami and expect him to just sort it out. And as time wore on and we got older and wiser and started to understand a little bit more, we started to see things more clearly, but also that happened because we quieted the mind and we had a bit of silence and that silence allowed us to observe more and to listen more. Thank you so much, Sister Tavi, Brother Progasson. Really was a lovely sharing of your experiences and how you came to Swami. And I hope you have inspired others to come and share theirs in the future. Om Shri Sai Ram, our most beloved Bhagwan, we offer our most loving and reverential pranams at your divine lotus feet. Swami, ten years ago, you transformed your physical presence into eternal omnipresence. When you left your physical form, you eternally installed yourself in our hearts as our Hridaya Nivasi Dearest Bhagwan, without you our lives are meaningless. You have touched all our lives at different times and in different ways and transformed us with your love and compassion. Like Saint Kabir Das once said, Sab dharti kagaj karun, lekhani sab ban rai. Sat Samundar ki masi karu, Guru Gun likhana jai. 
that means even if the whole earth is converted into a paper and the woods of all the forests are used as a pen and the water of all the seven seas as the ink even then one cannot completely write the glories of the divine master so much is the greatness of the divine master we pray that we can forever continue singing your infinite glories swami today as we celebrate your advent your life your message and your mission we the milton keen sai center offer at your lotus feet a musical rendition of tu pyar ka sagar hai rama was remembered as kodand rama krishna was known as murli dhara so tu bhagwan for us you will always be our prem swarupa an embodiment of pure love saima you have always showered all your children with your love and compassion swami you truly are the infinite ocean of love aar pyar ka sagar
భగవంతునికి రూపనామం రెండు కూడా నువ్వు కల్పితమే కానీ అవి సరైనటువంటివి కాదు భగవంతునికి ఎట్టి మార్పులు కూడా ఉండవు తాను చావును పుట్టును పుట్టుక లేనట్టి శాశ్వతం ఉండు ఆది మధ్యాంతర హితుడు అరాదేవాడు అతను శాశ్వతమైనటువంటి ఆత్మస్వరూపుడే అట్టి ఆత్మస్వరూపునికి రూపనామం కల్పించడము కేవలము మానవుడు యొక్క కల్పితములు మానవుడు యొక్క భ్రాంతి అయితే అట్టి ఫార్మ్లెస్ కార్డు కూడా నువ్వు భక్తుడు కోరినప్పుడు ఆ కోరినటువంటి కోరిక తీర్చి నిమిత్తమై ఆ రూపం ధరిస్తుంటాడు నాకు కృష్ణ స్వరూపం కావాలి అని కోరినప్పుడు కృష్ణుడిగానే వస్తాడు నాకు రాముడు కావాలన్నప్పుడు రామస్వరూపంలోనే వస్తాడు రాముడు లేడు అక్కడ కృష్ణుడు లేడు కానీ ఆ భక్తుని తృప్తి నిమిత్తమై ఆ రూపం ధరిస్తూ వస్తుంటాడు కనుక భక్తులను తృప్తిపరిచే నిమిత్తమై భగవంతుడు రూపం ధరిస్తుంటాడు కానీ అతనికి ఎట్టి రూపములు లేవు గుణములే లేవు అతనికి ఎట్టి గుణములు లేనటువంటి యొక్క భగవంతునికు గుణములు రూపములు మనం ఏర్పరచుకొని మనకు మనం తృప్తిపరుచున్నాము రూపములన్నీ కూడాను అప్పటికైనాను అనిత్యండి నిత్య సత్యమైనటువంటి యొక్క రూపము ఆత్మనే కానీ దీనికి అనేక రూపములు కల్పించి మీరే దాన్ని అనర్థములు చేసుకుంటున్నారు అయితే అప్పుడప్పుడు శరీరం ధరించినప్పుడు ఆ శరీరాన్ని మనం ఆశించటము పూజించటము స్మరించటము అది సత్యమే అది ఉన్నంత వరకును నీవు ఆనందంగా ఉంటుంటావు తర్వాత నీకు ఆ సుఖం ఎక్కడి నుంచి వస్తుంది ఈ సుఖము నీ భ్రాంతి నుంచి వచ్చినటువంటిదే కానీ మరొక చోటు నుంచి రాలేదు అట్టునే శరీరంలో కొంతకాలం ఉంటుంటాయి తదుపరి అనేక రకం రూపములు ధరిస్తూ ఉంటాయి ఇప్పుడు ఈ శరీరం కూడా ఉన్నది ఈ శరీరంగా వచ్చినప్పుడు ఎన్నో మార్పులు చెందుతుంటాయి ఇది ఇంకా కొంతకాలంలో ఈ శరీరం మీకు కల్పించకుండా పోవచ్చు కానీ మీరు అప్పుడు బాధపడటం సహజం కాదు తన స్వస్థానంలో తాను చేరుకున్నప్పుడు మీరు ఆనందించవలసిందే కానీ బాధపడకూడదు కనుక శరీరములు ఎప్పటికైనా అశాశ్వతములు అసత్యములే దేహం కూరక తప్పది ఎప్పుడు దేహి దయామయుడు కరుణింపక దేహికి చావు పుట్టుకలు మోహ నిబంధ బంధనలు ముద్రలు లేవు కనుక మీరు ఎప్పుడు కూడా దేహాన్ని మీరు పెద్దదిగా శాశ్వతంగా భావించరాదు ఆయా కాలములు ఆయా పరిస్థితులు ఆ యొక్క సమయము సందర్భంలో వచ్చినప్పుడు మాత్రమే ఆ దేహమును కనిపిస్తుంది ఆ కాలం వచ్చినప్పటికీ తిరిగి ఆ యొక్క దేహములు కానీ ఆ యొక్క అనుభవములు కానీ ఏమాత్రం కూడా ఉండవు కనుక మీరు దేహాలు సత్యమని భావించుకొని ఆ కృష్ణుడే కావాలి ఈనాడు ద్వారక ద్వారక నగరంలో జన్మించినటువంటి యొక్క కృష్ణుడు ఈనాడు నీకు కనిపించమంటే ఏ విధంగా కనిపించగలడు ఆ దేహం ఉండినంత వరకు ఆ ద్వారక లోపల నడిచాడు సంచరించాడు సంతోష పెట్టాడు ఇప్పుడు ప్రతి ఒక్క దీనికి కూడా బల్బులు ఒక పవర్ ఉన్నది ఈ పవర్ పవర్ అంతా కూడా కొంతకాలం వరకే ఉంటుంది అంటే అవతారంలో అన్నీ కూడా బల్బులు వంటివి కానీ ఆ యొక్క పవర్ తగ్గిపోతానే ఆ బల్బ్ మీకు కనిపించదు ఇతని అవతారంలో అన్నీ కూడా అనేక రకములైనటువంటి అవతారములు ఎన్నో వచ్చినవి దానిని మాత్రమే మీరు స్మరించుకొని దానిని మాత్రమే స్థిరం చేసుకొని మీరు దానినే మీరు ఆధారం చేసుకోవాలి అంతేకాని ఆ ఫార్మ్ ఎప్పుడు ఉండాలి అక్కడిని మీరు ఆశించకూడదు నీవు పుట్టినటువంటి బాలుడవు ఇప్పుడు ఎంతో పెద్దవాడు అయిపోయినావు కాలేజ్ బాయ్ అయినావు కానీ ఇది ఎంతకాలం వచ్చింది కొంతకాలమే తిరిగి మార్పు చెందుతుంది నీకు మ్యారేజ్ అవుతానే నీకు కుమారుడు కలుగుతాడు అదే విధంగానే అవతారములు అన్నీ కూడా వచ్చినవన్నీ కొంత కొంతకాలం మాత్రమే ఉంటాయి అందరికి సంతోషంగా ఉందా ఆర్ యూ ఆల్ హ్యాపీ be always happy happy happy
Excellent, excellent. Well, a brilliant event today. Uh, I want to thank all the singers, in particular uh, Diasa, Ashish Bhai, and the 18 people who compiled that final piece. Brilliantly done. I um, also want to thank Tavi and Pragasan for saying how they got into our fold, into the Sai fold. And hopefully they've motivated a few other people to come forward to tell about their own experience. Um, also, we want to thank the Group 3 Year 1 children for, for their presentation on the legacies of Swami. You know, it's amazing what, what Swami has done for, for society. And finally, I want to thank Anil for stitching all this together and finding some excellent slides to put with the, with the legacies presentation. I don't know if many of you actually saw the national Aradhana celebration yesterday. Beautifully done. The best part, I thought, was the interview with this 90-year-old devotee of Swami, Kupam Vijayamma. She, she related uh, what it was like in the old days, and, and you really have to listen to it. I don't think when I'm 90, I can be as eloquent and as lucid as this lady. Well worth a listen. So we'll send out the link, and you can um, view it in your own time. And then at 2 o'clock today, we have a lecture by Pandit Vignesh on the significance of Ram Navami, Ra Rama Navami. So please, if you have time, tune into that as well. And I think that concludes our day for today. And I look forward to seeing all of you next Sunday. Have a restful week and look after yourselves. God bless. Sai Ram. Bye.